Hey Internet, I'm Chaz. And I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine A Serious Business, episode 89. This is a recap of Dundee Hills Passport Weekend. Yes, I know this is a little while ago, but it takes us a while to get through, you know, the shows we got lined up. Um, I went out there for that event weekend. I love it. Dundee Hills is one of my favorite ABA's wine growing regions in the world. You know, event weekend. Mine too. Are, totally yeah. mine too, yeah. People are pouring special stuff, and I picked up some bottles, and they were for my personal collection, but I'm like, what the heck? Let's do a show of the stuff that I thought really stood out, stuff that I thought was good enough that, that I'd buy. You know, so let, let's and see. I'm the prize too, yeah, so... So here we go. What we got um, first? We got uh, Winderly Rosé from 2010. Uh, <laughs> all Pinot Noir. And a lot of the rosés in the valley are done uh, Saini, I think is how you pronounce that, where they pull the juice off before it's entirely done soaking in the skins. That helps concentrate the rest of the juice, give you a nice, oh. thicker, richer red. These guys don't do that. They're 100% committed to the rosé that they're making here. The skins and grapes... And, you know, and everything that's used in the fermentation and for the flavor and the color is dedicated to this rosé. It's not used for the wine later, which is pretty cool, right? They're really yeah. serious about it. And in the intensity, you totally pick that up. Yeah, beautiful color. Mm -hmm. It's right off the bat, man. It's like this, like, almost orange. Like yeah. Like glowing. I think like the light gives you a little yeah. bit of that. But, yeah. uh, it's, you know, you can tell it's rich right away. Yeah. And then yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> and the nose just yeah. bursts out of the glass, like yeah. powerful rosé. And it's not like uh, thick and heavy, like you've, you've had some like Italian rosés and like mm -hmm. uh, like maybe Zin rosés. Well, they're almost like really rich, almost. Or like heavy, earthy, mm -hmm. and it's not like that. It's definitely more in the Pinot Noir character, but like strawberries all over the place. Yeah, and big time, uh, picking up like a ruby red grapefruit, like fresh squeezed grapefruit, oh, yeah. red grapefruit. Um, but man, lots of strawberry intensity to the nose, too. It's just absolutely beautiful. A little bit of a floral thing going on there. Yeah. Like, lovely nose. Absolutely. Lots of acidity jumping out of the glass. You can tell it's going to be a, an acidic wine, but man, the flavors are just so inviting. Mm. Contacts right away with uh, really good strawberry flavors right on the tip of the tongue. The acidity's racing down the center of my palate. And it's a really high quality acidity, too. It mm -hmm. lingers well. Mouth watering a little bit now. Yeah, the feel of the wine on the palate is fantastic. I mean, um, medium bodied, a little bit of like uh, viscosity there. Like it's, it's, it's definitely not light. Um, but man, the acidity, the way the acidity just takes a hold of the tongue and just mm -hmm. like grabs it. Again, reminding me sort of like grapefruit flavors, maybe even like a little bit of lemon in there. Yeah, I'm getting like a little hint of the rhubarb on the, on the way back in there. And, and these strawberries are like super full and rich. I'm almost like they've been like baked into a pastry or something like that. But just full complexity, great flavor from front to back, all the way across. It's really nice. Yeah, the strawberry lingers there for a long time. A lot of great fruity flavors. A little bit of yellow lemon on the end. Mm, yeah, it's delicious. It's very good. And the, the finish lingers for a good amount of time. Lots of intensity left over. Like the acidity is still puckering the mouth up here. And so this is what I wanted to hit you too. If this was poured blind in a black glass and you know, like in a lineup of lighter 07 Pinot Noirs, would you be able to call this out as a rosé? I'm not sure that I could. The flavor is so full, you know, like looking at it, I'm like, oh yeah, there's this and that, but I, I think I could be tricked. I think I could be tricked. It's, it's possible. There's I don't a, know. Yeah, it's just a lot of flavor. Yeah. We'll set the way I've been drinking a lot of 07 Pinots lately. So. Ah. Yeah. yeah. Um, Solid. 90 minus for me. Yeah, 90 points. Like, that's possibly the best rosé I've had out of Oregon. I mean, it's... It's, it's definitely up there. It's, it's definitely it's up there. there. Yeah. It's, it's really, really good, fellas. Check it out. So. Yep. All right. On to wine good number bit. two. Yeah. Good. <laughs> good. Yeah. We got, we got one one that was worth picking up at yeah. least. Uh, White Rose Estate. These uh, these guys have been favorites of mine for, for quite some time. This is the 2008 Whole Cluster uh, bottle. I don't know how we feel about the White Rose. Yep. 2008 is good stuff. This is one of their... Top wines, they are one of my favorite wineries in the Dundee Hills. Consistently delivering one of the uh, smoothest and silkiest mouthfeels on a regular basis. That's what really uh, draws me to them. Um, but this is a whole cluster bottling, so there's going to be a little less of that, right? There's going to be a little more tannins in there, but still, mm -hmm. well, well, you'll see soon enough. We shall. Super nice people, gorgeous tasting room. Check them out if you're in the area. I will say that. like I, White Rose is definitely a, a winery that I sort of struggle with their style. Stylistically, man, what a tasting room. Really cool place to go check out. And just like right on the edge of that Dundee Hill where the view just kind of, you can almost see the, the curvature of the earth. 
on good, like, clear days. Yeah. It's amazing. So, sure. worth checking out if you're in the Willamette Valley. Definitely more earthy on yeah. the nose, but Very it's not dark. overwhelming, right? It's yeah. kind of like a soft, and I'd say dark earth, even though that's kind of like red earth area, that's not coming through so much. It's more yeah. like a dark earthy. A little bit of the cherries after they've fallen on the ground and sort of sat there for a little while. It's dead yeah. on. Yeah. So that's and like totally ripe, right? Like right. these aren't like the lighter, whiter cherries. These are like full on dark. Some of the whole cluster definitely comes through for people who know why like the stemminess is definitely there, but you know. No, very well integrated. Yeah, just the like, fruit is right up front, and just like this light funk, right? You get some Pinot yep. Noirs where it's like over the top, like barnyard or like forest floor heavy. No, nope. it's in the background. I'd say the cherries are really out front on this. Yeah, a little bit of hibiscus, I think too. Hibiscus. Where does that come from? Uh, if, you, if you had that in tea before, so I really like hibiscus tea. That's where oh, that's where wow. I got stuck on that. Check it out sometime. Yeah. And a lot of people, oh, and like maybe I'll do it with it the tea bags or brew it, because a lot of people like if you buy in the bottles, they sugar it like crazy, and it's. Kind of tasty, but it's mm -hmm. tanned to five. I'll have to yeah. check it out. But yeah, overall, man, delicious nose. Mm -hmm. Sort of inviting, like, definitely a little bit of that D D Dundee Hills terroir. Ter nice. My pronunciation is off today. We're Americans. Um, we're Amer dirty Americans, yeah. Let's drink this. Light and gentle as it contacts. The cherry flavors really come in on the mid palate, and they just kind of rise up. And then slowly wash off in the end. The acidity is sitting just like firmly and centrally on my tongue, kind of from early on. And it doesn't really move around a lot. It just kind of stays there, keeps things clean and dry. Man, the feel of the tannins on this kick ass. I don't know, I like a strong, like some of these stronger wines where the, if, like you, sometimes you get gritty tannins, sometimes mm -hmm. you can get like some rough tannins that just don't integrate well with the wine. Like this is full integration here. The tannins are... You're expecting them. They're like so tough, but you're expecting them to like grit up on the sides of your tongue. It's like not there. They just don't. It's yeah. like it doesn't pucker the shit out of your mouth. It's like it's it's yeah, nice, nice. Uh, the way the way this the way this wine rolls across the palate is really really nice. Yeah, and I and I love the mouthfeel. I'm getting a lot of strawberry flavors late, like dark, very ripe strawberries again. I boy, the more I think about it, I'm like maybe that's even more dominant over the cherries. Um, but it lingers for a long time. Like, I'm still tasting fruit. And beautiful, full acidity. Man, it's just long finish. Balanced now, but the intensity level's right. This is going to be one that you could age probably really well. Totally. Based on how balanced this is and how the tannins and the acidity are, man. And it's not super delicious. powerful, so I can no. see this just getting, like, incredibly delicate, mm -hmm. you know, as, as time goes by, too, which... These have been open for a couple hours. I opened these and took just an initial taste off to see if they were cork. This one was way tighter initially than it is now. This is showing much more open than it was before. So um, if you do Sweet. have this, decant it or just give it another year or two. Nice. And yeah. I'm glad you opened it up. Yeah. Because yeah. I think, and I'd say that for any of the higher end 08 stuff that's young, you know, yeah. decant it, it, check it out. A lot of it's closed or a little tough. Yeah. Definitely decant it. But man, this is another beautiful wine. Another good choice. Uh, but just clean. Mm -hmm. I'm going to 91 points on it. It's, it's good. This is Possibly the best I've felt about a white rose bottling. What's the price point on this? It's up there. So this is one of the top ones. It's seventy five bucks. So okay. Um, yeah. And 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 full full credit. And I guess disclosure, they cut me a deal on it because we were talking. I was talking about doing something of theirs on a show. Okay. So thanks, guys. Like this is a wonderful wine to share with the audience. Um, so I should say at this price point, this is sort of what I expect from white rose. Then these wines. White Rose for me, like stylistically, I, I sort of falter with their like $35 and $50 bottlings, but when you step up to like their, their top bottlings, they're undeniably good. Like this is the creme of the creme, like this is the delicious, d delicious juice, so. Great wine and, from the yeah. Hills, right? Fantastic. Killer stuff, yeah. so. Yeah, so thanks for sharing and, and uh, totally, oh yeah, I got, uh, I'm gonna go 92 points on this. Yeah, rock solid, and, and their style's consistent. 91 right plus. Yeah. Like this will age, and this will turn into a beautiful wine. And I, I there's, there's no more question. Yeah. God, that's, that's good. That's really <laughs> I know it's good. good. It's gonna be a good Friday night tonight. We're gonna we're gonna yeah. enjoy these. Uh, wine number three. This is uh, from Ayub, the uh, Bretagne vineyard. Um, yeah, we'll probably talk. Greenville. We'll probably talk more about Bretagne as a winemaker and what he does He's in another serious. episode. So we're not gonna dive right into that. Um, it's like but, staining the glass. Yeah. Little, little, Look at that color. Good darkness. Here. I think it's, it's darker like, than the 08 white rose. 
Yeah, and this is a 2009. That's right. Yeah. Did I say yeah. that right? Did I say uh, that? 2009 IU. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to over. I was pretty well regarded too. Like over the past couple of years, has gotten gotten a lot of acclaim. Right, really well respected among a lot of the people we hang out with. So I'm excited to share that. The 07 was pretty killer on release for an 07 wine, mm -hmm. but man, the 08 was just killing it. Like that was one of my favorites from 08. The IU, it was easily in the top 10. Um, I tasted a lot of 08. And he he was an engineer. He used to design valve equipment too. Wow. Yeah. God, this so smells funny. Tied in. Some of the heaviest glass I've seen on anything, including champagne bottles. Stick your fist in it. Yeah. Where's Tammy? Tammy, just put your fist in this. <laughs> All right. So I can tell right off the bat, just from the taste, that the nose and the, the, the intensity of this wine is off the hook. Yeah. Big, big stuff. Like some, something hanging out of my mouth. Oh, man. Yeah. Powerful. <laughs> We get like dark strawberries, kind of rhubarb surrounding it. Maybe it's like a little tart thing going on. That makes sense. Yeah, a little light crust wrapped around a strawberry rhubarb tart. I yeah. totally see it. It's that. like a strawberry and rhubarb bomb went off in this glass. Yeah. And it is full intensity. Some big minerality going on there. This is yeah, and the minerality kind of struck me the first time I tasted this too when I when I was out at the event. I'm just like, wow, it's really distinct. It's really full. Despite these like big, powerful, juicy flavors, there's still like this sophisticated line that runs through it. That's that's really interesting. There's like a, a grapiness too, the stink like grapiness, almost like I, w I don't want to say juice because it's not juice, but like like sort of what you expect from say like a Welch's grape juice. Like this is sort of like sweet grape flavor, dark, right? dark grape yeah. flavor in it, along with the strawberry and rhubarb. But man, it's just like what a Wild nose. Like, I kind of see that. I kind of see that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just back there. I don't know. It's sort of what takes up the back edge of it for me, but. Alright, let's taste this shit first. Just full flavors again. Delivers, in a lot of ways, exactly what you get on the nose. The tannins, also, like, much like the white rose, very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Full structure without ever being gripping or frustrating or difficult or anything like that. Much stronger acidity here though. The acidity totally. is full on. For people who like high acidity, you're going to absolutely love this because being as like large, large as this wine is, man, the acidity and the tannin, the structure really balances this wine out. The acidity takes, comes over and takes everything over it in the finish. Um, man, I'm still tasting this like full on. Yeah. This is... Maybe I'm getting some grapefruit now. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I was gonna say there's there is definitely like a citrus, some sort of citrus, in there, and uh, it's just like the, yeah, the dark, heavy strawberries. Man, if you like people that like full, like full, full force, full intensity wines, this is for you. This is and and a cool thing about it, right? There are a lot of people that make this heavier style. This, to me, and I maybe you'd agree, maybe not. Like this is an oak to the to mm -hmm. the winds, right? Like no. The, it's much more about the fruit. It's totally balanced. The With acidity the and the minerality, minerality yeah. kind of keep things in line. So even though this fruit is pretty hedonistic, it's balanced out with right. some other characteristics. With that acidity and that minerality, yeah, for sure. And I'll even say, like, mm. due to the size of it, like, there was a little bit of heat. This is awesome. But it works, <laughs> right? If the fruit yeah. was much lighter, I think it'd be disruptive. And I'm, a, I'm an alcohol hater a lot, of mm -hmm. way, a lot of times. Like, if that shows up, I'm usually like, knock it down, knock it down. Right? Yeah, and to yeah. it. Here, I think it, the fruit's enough that it... It contributes to the overall structure. Right. It's a little warm, but not not so much so. I mean, the intensity of the flavor and the, and the acidity is over the, over mm. that. So. And it, this man, this bitter out like it's totally like all of these powerful fruits and like wet rocks, like yeah. mouthful mouth of wet rocks. It reminds me of like a pumice chalkiness, yeah. almost, and then like wet wet granite out of the river. You know, like pretty crazy. Delicious. Delicious. Another great candidate for aging. That's that bo in both these cases. That's mm -hmm. part of what compelled me to pick it up. I'm like, I could drink them tomorrow and be a happy guy. I could drink them five, ten years. You drink this in three years, this would be kicking so much ass. I mean, and especially like this is just released. Actually, yeah, even in one year, I think it'll be even better. Yeah, yeah really jumping up. Man, where do you go? Solid going? stuff. This and stylistically, this is a completely different wine than the White Rose. I mean, this is. And both, which is, which is, I love to exhibit, right? Because yeah. some people would fall more into this camp, some people would fall more into this camp, but I think most people would agree that both are rock solid. Yeah, they're both delicious. Um, oh, David, call it, David. Perfect. Yeah. 
terrible drink. Yeah, yeah. He, no, he probably wouldn't so. like he it. Loved the, he loved the 08. Yeah, you? He bought the crap. I know, and then, you know, the minerality is compelling. Yeah. So, it is. Scoring this is hard. I'm going to go... I'm going to go 92 again. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put it right on par. It's totally different, and that's well, why I'm right so hard other. about it. I'm just yeah. like... What separates it? But like, do I really like one better than the other? I, I don't think so. You know, they're 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 both totally enjoyable, and we're gonna we're gonna kill both these bottles. I don't with, hate flavor with great enthusiasm tonight. So. Yeah, I don't hate flavor, and in this case, the intensity works for this wine. This wine is a complete package. It's and all easily easily the best two thousand nine wine I've had so far. Ninety two plus for me. I think it's really good. good. It's really good. And, and again, Dundee Hills. Killing it, Oregon, killing it. These are some names that don't maybe don't get the best distribution everywhere, but look them up. They all sell their wines online, right? This is just released. This is going to be pretty hard to find now, actually. But these two are brand new. If you, yeah. if you send the wineries an email, you can check. You, you can pick some up. White Rose has got a little bit. Maybe yeah, man. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I, I know see, I an email really ask because I mean, this is if you're looking for OH for the seller, this is one to buy. Yeah, no question. Um. So, the question of the day where I was going with this, so we, we got this on kind of like an event weekend, the Passport weekend. They open up, pour some special things, everybody comes out, even people who aren't usually open. Do you prefer to do those? The downside, of course, being that it's packed, right? There's a ton yeah. of crowds, you gotta wait for people, traffic can be difficult. Do you prefer to do your tastings like that, or do you, yeah, do you prefer to do your tastings on uh, on an off weekend when nobody's out there, crappy weather, but you kind of have the tasting rooms to yourselves, you can yeah. be a little more relaxed? What do you like? Yeah, um, I think I'm inclined to do the event weekends because it's a real, you know, we get to taste a lot of wine, kind of it's as true. it is, and so the chances to taste stuff that isn't available every weekend mm -hmm. is a treat for me. What about you? Oh, I tend to be, like, off weekend, especially, like, weekday. Oh, now, since since like, I work a really weird shift, love going out on weekdays when, like, they just don't expect a lot of people to be in there, especially, like, if you fall in love with a wine, you can sort of sit there and talk with the staff about it. That is you a know, huge benefit. It's I, I, huge. I dig that. And so every once in a while they'll be like, yeah, we've got something going on back in the winery. Let's, let's go back and take a look or you know, taste something. So, yeah, I prefer that. But yeah. Yeah, weekends are fun, too. You should do them if you don't. So Valid points. Maybe I'll see show. somebody else on Memorial Day. This was, was, this was a killer show. <coughs> yes. Episode 90 next. Episode 90. One. We're yeah. closing in. 100 inevitable at this yeah. point. Yeah. It's true. See ya. Friday, Friday. <laughs> yeah, I was gotta uh, get down on <laughs> Damn. Big glass drinking.